In 2023, we had some amazing family cruises on some of the bigger P&O ships. Sometimes they were lacking in things like service. We even did a video on it. But what would P&O's beloved smaller ship, Aurora, be like? Let's find out. Hello. Not sure if you'll all remember me or not, as it tends to be Tom's face that you see on the 4B's YouTube channel. I have just been on a four night, five day cruise on P&O's Aurora. So there were eight of us that went. Some of them had never been on a cruise before. Some of us had been on cruises before. If you're new to our channel, when we review, we look at all of these different categories and give them a mark out of five. Let's find out where Aurora sits. At the moment, top of the leaderboard, we have Queen Mary and Princess Sun. Embarkation. Embarkation was really, really easy. So we had one of the first time slots to get on the ship. So we were on the ship, 1.30, two o'clock. Quick and easy. We were straight through, straight through passport, straight through security, and then onto the ship. So it was quite interesting. So as some of them have never been on a cruise ship before, I really think they had no idea what to really actually expect. And they were all like, oh, we're on holiday. And that is one of the beauties of cruising that I do love, especially going from Southampton, because you're just on the ship and then you're on holiday. You haven't got the palaver of going to an airport, having all of that stress. A five for embarkation for Aurora. Just taking a quick break. If you've liked this video, give it a like and a subscribe. And a thank you from the four Bs. Before I give you my verdict on the ship, let's take a look around. really small and intimate. When we were arriving at the port there was MSC Eurybia next to us and the girls that I was with were like oh my god look at the size of that ship and I was like yeah don't worry ours is nothing like the size of that um, and yeah I just found the whole ship the ambience it was just classically chic and intimate that is how I would describe it it felt really homely and safe and um, fairly easy to navigate uh, I've realised that maybe I'm not the one in the family who does find my way around a ship very well. I've normally got Ernest with me and he's very good. So there were a few occasions where I was a bit like, well, where on earth am I? Because um, it's very maze-like, I would say. It's not a very open ship. There's lots of bits here, there and everywhere. However, after four days and not too many wines, um, I did manage to find my way around the ship. The ship itself... It does need a little bit of TLC, it is a very old ship, but actually 
it's not showing too many signs of wear and tear, I wouldn't say. Um, it was very clean throughout. Um, I didn't actually, I think I spotted one thing, um, which was that there was one toilet out of order when we were on board, which is absolutely nothing, is it really, in the grand scheme of things. Plenty of places to get a drink, plenty of places to sit down. The only negative I would have about the ship is the atrium. It's not really an atrium on board. Um, well, maybe there was and I just didn't find it. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if there is and I've just missed a whole part of the ship. But yeah, so we did manage to explore most areas on the ship. I'd give the ship itself a four out of five. Next up, we have the cabins. The first thing I will say about the cabins, P&O, bring back your drawers. It was so nice to have drawers. Um, we could actually just put everything away. Um, again, I always take packing cubes, so I just put the cubes in the drawer and that was that. Didn't need to think about it anymore. Another negative, I've got quite a big suitcase and my suitcase wouldn't fit underneath the bed. So we had to have my suitcase in the wardrobe, which meant we couldn't shut the wardrobe properly because um, it just wasn't enough space to put it anywhere else in the room, which was a little bit annoying. Uh, the cabin itself, so we had two single beds. There's a cute curtain that you can pull across. So there was one night that I did go to bed a lot earlier than one of my friends who I was sharing the cabin with. I just closed the curtains and then when she came in, she didn't disturb me too much. So that was nice. The bathroom... Mm, still got the shower curtains and it was pink and glittery it was very bizarre reminded me a little bit of a barbie dream house type of bathroom um but it was all functional no complaints the cabin steward was really good he made sure we had ice every night the beds were really comfortable the pillows were lovely and the cabin itself is the first time that we have had a sea view room so actually it was really nice just to look out in the middle of the sea. Service. So I have seen P&O get a lot of crap, can I say crap, for their service recently. Um, and I do tend to agree on the larger P&O ships, the service can be quite poor. It can take you up to an hour to get served for a drink. We had none of those issues on this cruise. I can say hand on heart that every time I needed a drink, there was somebody there straight away. The service in the MDR was absolutely spectacular. The two waiters that we had were brilliant. They couldn't do enough for us. They were engaging and they had very good banter, whether that's because we were a table of eight women, um, I don't know. But actually, they all seemed really, really happy a lot of the time. Um, and that's something that, again, when we have been on RV and P&O, I have found some of the staff quite rude. Again, I don't necessarily think it's their fault. I think it's the fact that they're overworked. And I think especially with Aurora. So Aurora had just done a 65 day cruise. So our cabin steward was telling us that he was actually going home to the Philippines um, after our short cruise. So the fact that they had gone from a 65 day cruise to a four day, what would be sometimes perceived as a booze cruise for four days. Um, I thought that they were all in really good spirits. Everyone was really friendly. Um, no one could do enough for you, basically. Service on the ship, I am going to give it a whopping five out of five. Um, and I think that is very well deserved. Again, I don't know with service. So obviously I have children. Um, and everyone that I was with had chil has children um, and Aurora is an adult only ship. I'm not quite sure. The atmosphere on board felt quite different, I think, because of the fact that there were no kids and it was just, yeah, I'd recommend an adult only ship, especially when you've not got your kids with you. Food. Again, P&O sometimes can be very hit and miss with their food. We have found this on many of the P&O ships that we have been on. We have had great food and we've had not so great food. I didn't actually eat in any of the speciality restaurants. Normally, I would opt to eat in a speciality restaurant because there were eight of us. We couldn't book beforehand. Um, so we just didn't book and said we would do it when we were on board. However, the food in the MDR was so good that actually we didn't need to. And I am quite a snob when it comes to food, I would say. Um, it is one of the things that if it's not amazing or it's just a bit meh, 
then I will say something. However, I couldn't fault any of the food that we had. It was all really tasty. It was hot, fresh. And again, the waiting staff couldn't do enough for you. So I asked for a side of vegetables one night. And then every night after that, they made sure that we had extra vegetables on our table, which was very nice. Again, all hot and freshly prepared. Another thing on food, this goes into food and service really. So one of my friends is actually gluten and dairy intolerant. And every night the waiter gave her the menu for the next day so that she could pick beforehand what she wanted. So actually they could cater that specific meal to make sure that there was no gluten and no dairy in that, which I thought was brilliant. It was also quite amusing the day we got back from Amsterdam and there was someone just loitering outside of our room trying to give her the menu. Um, and we'd obviously got back to the ship quite late. So that was quite funny. Don't go for the vegan cheese though. She asked for it on the first night. And again, they made sure she then had a cheese board every night. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. Not nice cheese at all. It's a bit like a parmesan, but yeah, not as nice. The buffet, P&O, again, tend to be quite the same with their buffets. It is a Sunday roast every day. Um, <clears throat> and I did actually eat a roast when I was on board, which I've never done before um, on a P&O ship. But again, there was a fair amount of variety. Didn't actually eat in the buffet for breakfast. We went to the MDR every day. I think the only thing Aurora's really lacking is another unpaid restaurant something like the keys but you're never going to get that on there because it's just it's too small there's not enough space to put it four and a half out of five entertainment as i have said there were eight of us we pretty much made our own entertainment throughout the whole cruise we had a good laugh if i'd had the kids with me Again, it doesn't cater for children, so there shouldn't have been stuff on there, but there wasn't all that much going on in the daytime. The bingo, which was on every day, we did participate in that and we did do some line dancing as well. So there's lots of dance classes going on. Uh, evening entertainment. I did feel it lacked and it was shows that I had seen before. It was a bit like deja vu. My friends, however, who hadn't been on a cruise before, um, thought that the entertainment was really good um, and they did enjoy it. There was also an amazing singer um, and he performed two of the nights that we were on board and we actually went to all of his shows on our last night um, and he was in the main bar. Sea days I think maybe there could have been a little bit more going on that people could participate in. The one thing with the quizzes, so they tended to do the quizzes in one of the smaller bars the name of it has completely slipped my mind. I'm sure Tom will put a picture up of it because I'll remember. Um, <clears throat> so we did go to a music quiz um, in this bar and we were literally sitting on the bar at the end of the room because there was just no space for anyone to sit. Oops. We were actually on board for, hmm, don't quote me on this because this is Tom's working out, <laughs> that we were on board for 80 hours. So we got on on the Friday lunchtime and then we got off on the Tuesday morning. We only actually spent just under 30 hours in a port. So we got into Rotterdam at eight o'clock in the morning and then we left Rotterdam at 1 p.m. the next day. So this cruise was sold as a two day stopover in Rotterdam. It's not a two day stopover. By the time you've woken up, there was no point getting off the ship. Um, so the one port that we did go to, we went into Amsterdam for the day, had a fantastic day, but it would have been really nice if we had had until four or five o'clock on the Monday so that we could have explored Rotterdam um, as well as going into Amsterdam the previous day. So not overly impressed with that. Is it a money saving thing? Also, when we were going from Southampton, we literally, I think, just went up and down the channel. We didn't actually move very far at all. And the fact that we all had signal on our phones the next day just said how close we were still to land and we were still opposite Dover, I think, by the afternoon on Saturday. So, yeah, not great. A little bit too much money saving, I think, and they could have actually squeezed another port in. Ports, for me, it's a two. So I'll say it again. There were eight of us that went. We all had a sea view cabin. We also had all of our rooms together because we did the select save affair. We paid £380 plus we had £80 on board credit each. 
I personally thought this was really, really good value for money. Um, I would happily pay that again to go on the same cruise. LU for money on this cruise, four out of five easily. Would definitely pay that again. And it was well worth every penny. Pino, as many of you know, you can take on your own alcohol. So I did take some wine, maybe a bit of rum as well. But that was between me and my friend. Um, and as we had the onboard spend, I think I spent £20 um, in total. So not a lot really at all. Oh, and I did spend money, obviously, in Amsterdam, um, getting tattoos, which seemed like a really good idea at the time. So Aurora has scored 31 points, putting her at number six on our leaderboard, ahead of Iona and Avia. If you would like to take a look at our Sun Princess ship tour, take a click over here.